Hello, everyone, and welcome to the June 2017 ServeNow EDU. Uh, I am Trent Carlisle, the founder of Logical, the company that developed ServeNow, Serve Manager, and PI Now. Uh, thank you so much for joining us today. I'm sure everyone is getting ready for a long, fun Fourth of July weekend, and uh, I personally can't think of a better way to start the festivities than talking about affidavits. So. That's what we're going to do today. Um, I'll introduce you to our close friend and today's presenter, Tori Schaefer, in just a moment. But I'll first let you know that the recording of this webinar will be, will be posted online in the next few business days uh, on ServeNow.com. Just click on ServeNow EDU and you'll find it there. Uh, you can also find this and past episodes of ServeNow EDU on YouTube and iTunes. Uh, and if you're joining us live today, feel free to ask questions along the way. Uh, I'll be monitoring questions. You can ask them using the GoToWebinar uh, questions widget. Uh, today's topic is creating bulletproof affidavits. And as I mentioned earlier, Tori has, Tori has been a friend and a longtime customer of ServeNow. Uh, she's the owner and president of Tori's Legal Services in the Maryland and Washington, D.C. area and has been in the process serving industry for over 20 years. She is a founding member, past president, and current director of the Mid-Atlantic Association of Professional Process Servers. Uh, she is also a past board member of the National Association of Professional Process Servers. Uh, Tori is no stranger to helping educate process servers. A couple years back, she presented at our online conference, uh, ServeCon, and there she spoke about the benefits of obtaining minority status as a woman-owned company and how that can improve your chances of being awarded state contracts. So if you want to go back and check that out, you can see that at uh, servecon.com. Tori, thank you so much for being here today. My pleasure. Awesome. Um, I'm just going to let you go ahead and, and get rolling. I think we, uh, we all see your slides there. So take it away. I will let you know if we have any questions from our audience, but um, it is all you. OK. Um, I may be having a little uh, Here we go. Hi, everybody. Trent already introduced me. I'll just give a quick, I'm the president of Tories Legal Services. What made me realize to do this topic is we do a lot of forwarding to all different states. And some of the affidavits that we get back are just horrendous. Uh, my philosophy is that we are the arm of the attorney. Our work is the reflection of the attorney that has sent us the job. Affidavits of service are the product of our work as process servers. It's our job to provide our clients with professional affidavits and to be proud of our work product. Everybody knows what an affidavit is. I'll just go through it very briefly. An affidavit is defined as a written statement of facts sworn to and signed by the affiant. Some states require a notary. A good way to think of an affidavit is a document of facts where you're swearing that the facts are true and correct. If you're a process server and you're signing an affidavit, you need to make sure that all of the information is correct. If you agree, then sign it. And if the state where the document originates requires a notary, the docu document needs to be signed in front of a notary. We all know what service of process is, but I just wanted to run through this. When a, case, when a case is initiated, the attorneys cannot move forward until the defendant is served with legal documents. Service process makes sure that the legal documents have been delivered to the person required to respond to them. To utilize the service process, usually the documents are given to the process server by the plaintiff, the defendant, an attorney, or if you get work from other process serving companies, by another process serving company. 
There are several ways to serve process. You should always follow the instructions provided by the plaintiff or the attorney. For example, in the case of personal service, the process server must physically give the person the document. An affidavit in process serving is also known as an affidavit of service or a proof of service. It is a document provided by the process server that states the pertinent facts of the service. It is an official document to confirm that service has been made, and in most cases, it gets filed with the court. In the case of a non-serve, a due diligence affidavit should be provided. And an affidavit should be provided for every party that was served. There are several types of affidavits. There are state and federal affidavits, and I will first address the state affidavits, and then we'll get into the federal affidavits. There are generally five parts of the affidavit. The case caption, the affiant statement, the service statement, a signature block, and also a notary block. In Washington, D.C., you have to have all your documents notarized. So we automatically have a notary block on our affidavits. In the case caption, it, it should include the plaintiff, which in this case is Ronald Brown, the defendant, which is Valerie Berton, the case name, the case number, the court in which the document is being issued out of, which in this case is the District Court of Maryland for Prince George's County, and what the document is. And this is an affidavit of service. Here is another example, and this example is from the NAPS affidavit. It has the case caption, the case number, and the jurisdiction in which this process was issued out of. The Affian statement, it states who you are and you are and how you're related to the case. Nina Lou happens to work for me, and our standard Affian statement says, now comes the undersign and does hereby swear and affirm. The affiant is a private process server and disinterested person over the age of 18. Affiant is not a party in the above styled case and has a legal domicile of Silver Spring, Maryland. Or another way an affiant statement can be used is I, Corey King, being duly sworn, deposed in state, I am over the age of 18 and not a party to the action. And with the boundaries of the state where service was affected, I was authorized by law to perform said service. The affiant statement is very important. Service, how, how, how flexible is that affiant statement? Is it something that there's room for modifications or is that typically is there only one way that that can be written out depending upon the state? That's a very flexible statement. But what it must say is that you are over the age of 18 and that you're not a party to the action and that the facts are true and correct. Mm -hmm. You can write it any way that you want, but it must have that information in it. Mm -hmm because the court has to know this information. Right. So the service statement is basically all of the information regarding the actual statement. It gives the date and time of service, the name of the person being served, the type of, type of documents that are served, the type of service, in this particular slide, it says personal service, 
the address of where service was affected and the description of the person. So in here, Nina served on June 11th at 822 PM, a summons and complaint to Valerie Burton. She served it personally. It was served at 9210 Three Oaks Drive in Silver Spring. And then Nina described what Valerie looked like. And those are very, very important facts, especially if somebody is going to be contesting service. You have these facts written. Also, the type of documents. We just wrote a summons and complaint, but sometimes the documents are voluminous. And if you're using a process serving program, like Serve Now, for example, there may not be enough space to list all the documents. So what we suggest is on a separate piece of paper in Word, just write list of documents served and list the documents and attach it to the affidavit. And instead of where it says summons and complaint, type in see attached because we have had services where there's 40 50 documents that we need to serve and there's no way that we could possibly put them on an affidavit here is an affidavit for a corporation it was served on capstone nutrition by leaving it with christine Negrin and her relationship as an office manager. It has the date, the time, the address, and the city and state. Like I said earlier that we notarize all documents. So in the signature block, it clearly says, I, Nina, certify that my sta statements contained in the foregoing affidavit are true, correct, and my free act indeed. I am aware that any of the foregoing statements made by me willful, are willfully false. I am subject to punishment. She signs it and we notarize it. Now, not all states require notarization. For example, Maryland and Virginia do not require notarization but DC does. When, you're so, do, when you have a document for a person and they are not at home, you can substitute serve if that is the, if it's okay with your client. In substitute service, in most states, the person you are subserving must be a co-resident. You can't just serve the babysitter. In some states like Virginia, when you substitute serve, you need to serve a family member. So you must always include the relationship to the party being served. May it be a husband, a wife, a mother, a co-resident. So here we, Stuart, served at on May 18th at 1029, a summons and petition to modify, and it was for Jerry uh, Tilly. Instead, he served Will Langdon, who is Jerry's stepfather and also a co-resident. It has the address where it was served and it has Willie's description. If you have a business and you can substitute, that is a completely different type of affidavit because you are not serving them at their place of abode. So here we have a bunch of documents that were served on April 4th at 9.45 a.m. They were for Linda Mur Murdoch, Mick Murdoch, and she was not in. 
But her administrative assistant, Ali DiMartino, was authorized to accept at the usual place of business. And again, it has the address and a description of Allie. People get confused with substitute service at a business and at a residence. That's two completely different types of affidavits. Due diligence. I know everybody here hates these due diligence affidavits. They take a lot of time. But what they do is they show the court the amount of work that you have done and what has happened. So we got the papers on April 19th. We made an attempt at 640. There was no answer. We made another attempt on the 20th. It was answered by a male who identified himself and said that Char Charisse was out of town till Sunday. We went back on Sunday and there was nobody there. We went back on April 23rd. Again, we couldn't, nobody would answer the door. And actually our client had asked us in this case to leave the documents on the porch, even though it was not considered a good serve. On all of our attempts, we leave messages with our phone number. Uh, we went back on April 25th. Nobody answered the door. And we always use this line because we leave our phone number that we have not received any phone calls, messages, texts regarding accepting the service of process. And by doing this, the courts and your clients see how much work you put into this. I always say we work much harder trying to serve some, if somebody that's evading than somebody that just answers the door. So for posted service, you need to follow the rules in the state. In Maryland, for example, you must have a court order in order to post. In Virginia, I'm sorry. Oh, that was. Um, no, no, no. In Virginia, you can just post on the first attempt. What we do is we always take a picture and we post the document on the main entrance. Because, for example, if somebody has a carport and you know that that's the main entrance rather than the front door. So we provide an affidavit that was posted on the door of the main entrance of the address. And we take a picture and attach it to the affidavit of service. Uh, preparing the affidavit. As a process server, you are responsible or the company that you work for is responsible for, for preparing the affidavit. If you are using process serving software as ServeNow, they have custom templates. And as long as the information is put into the job properly, your affidavit should come out beautifully. If you don't use software, you can go online and use the NAPS affidavit. You can type an affidavit in a Word document and if for some reason you do not have any, if you don't have a computer, you just must make the affidavit legible. Remember, the quality of the affidavit is a reflection not only on your company or you as a process server, but as the arm of the attorney. Hopefully everyone has a computer by this point, but. I guess it's possible. We did, we did have a comment from, uh, I'll just 
add on to that, we did have a comment from Betsy who said, if you're using CERN Manager, making your due diligence affidavits are easy. You were talking about the due diligence affidavits earlier. I'm sure that's the case with uh, other software solutions that are out there, that if you're simply using the software the way that it's intended, you're entering in all of your attempts and the details, then hopefully at the end, all you have to do is kind of, you know, make a couple edits before you finalize that affidavit. So if you're not using a software solution, definitely look at what's out there because it'll make your life uh, a lot easier, not just making affidavits, but managing your entire business. Most definitely. Uh, now the good old federal affidavits. There's a couple, there's four different types of affidavits that the federal government uses. The AO 44O, which is for summons, an AO 88 for a subpoena to testify at a hearing, an AO 88A is for deposition, and an AO 88B is to produce documents. If you're using software, you should have these affidavits in the software. And if you're not, all the federal affidavits should be is are available online. Just make sure that you have the forms with the latest rev revision date, because every few years they revise them. A federal affidavit AO 44L is for a summons. We served a the Baltimore Refuge Refuse Energy System, and we serve Corporation Trust. So we checked that we served a summons on Bonnie Hartman, who is the corporate operations specialist with the address. We, ser we put what company we served care of Corporation Trust, as well as the date and time. Oh, sorry. We also, on the left-hand side, there's a date, and that is the date that it was served. You have the process server serve the, sign the affidavit, and then they want the, the process server to print their name with, of course, their address. They also need a description and what documents were served. And if you're following the template, it's really pretty easy to do that. Here is a subpoena to testify, an 88A. We served John Doe. We got the documents on June the 20th. We served John Doe or Jane Doe on Homely Lane and the date. We also included the witness fee. When it was served, also, the process server's name is printed. As you see, it was Joe DiMaggio. They know I like sports, so they use Joe DiMaggio. With a description of Jane Doe and what documents were served. Here's a subpoena to produce documents. And that is an 88B. It has the name of the person who was to produce the documents, the date the document was received, where it was served at and who it was served on, as well as the date and time. In most cases, you do not need to provide a witness fee for production of documents. Here, again, when it was served on April 19th, who the process server was, the description of the person, and the documents that he served to them. By doing this, by providing the documents that you were served, the person you're serving cannot say 
that they did not get a request for production of documents because we have it on the affidavit. And again, like I said earlier, if they can test service, you have a description of the person you were serving. These things are very, very important as part of doing our job, we need to provide the attorney with all of the information that we can. Thank you, and I'm happy to answer any questions. Thanks, Tori. Yeah, there is um, a question. Uh, Tim says he serves papers in a number of states. Uh, do you have a recommendation of one location he can get all the rules, statutes, etc.? Well, I know on the Serve Now website, they have all they have all the statutes. We serve papers from all over the country as well. And what some of our clients do is they send us their affidavits that we um, type rather than handwrite. Oh, I'm sorry. I don't know what happened here. That's okay. That's okay. If you're, if you're done, that's fine. Um, they're really, each state has their own rules. Mm -hmm. So that's one of the reasons why we just notarize everything automatically. And if we have our client sends us their affidavits, we will use theirs as well. Yeah. So there yeah, really, uh, it depends on the state, actually. Yeah, I mean, I, I am not aware of a place where you can go and see, all right, this type of paper has to be served this many days before the court date and can be subserved on so and so. Um, you know, we've we've tinkered around with some some kind of complementary tools to that statutes area of our site that you know we might have something down the road, but. Um, yeah, it seems like you kind of have to piecemeal it together right now. Well, every state has their own rules and their mm -hmm. own right. procedures. Right. Yeah. Um, I have a question. Um, one of the uh, things you led off with was that you forward lots of papers to different process serving companies. Uh, you mentioned that quite often they come back um, not presentable not something that you would want to hand over to your client or file with the court. Can you give us some examples, some, uh, some horror stories, if you will? Uh, it's scribbled on a plain piece of paper without the, without the court, without the court name. Um, they, do a fair, then there's one company in Montana, they use their letterhead as an affidavit. And in those cases, when we get affidavits that are embarrassing and not the work product that we put out, we will redo the affidavit and email it to them for signature. Right. And they actually, some of them get a little upset. You don't like it. And we just say, that's not how we do things here. Mm -hmm. um, have any of those ever slipped through and impacted the client's case? No, none have ever slipped through that impacted the client's case. Yes, there have been some that have slipped through. And actually, one of my clients said, this is an unusual affidavit for you because we attempt to be extremely professional and mm -hmm. we're the arm of the attorney. Right. Yeah. Um, so we actually have an affidavit department that goes through the affidavit and double checks to make sure the case number is correct and there are no misspellings. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I'm not sure if it's something that you do, but I mean, you being involved in the association and the you know national community as a whole, 
you know, you have tremendous access to other resources, people from other states. So if you got papers from Colorado and you felt like something wasn't quite right or California, because you do so much networking, I would imagine it'd be easy to pick up the phone and, you know, call a Steve Glenn or someone like that and say, hey, you know, what, um, you know, what do you think of this affidavit? You know, should be using something else or is this set up right? So definitely. I have done that. Yeah. I have absolutely done that. And I will tell you, Trent, that yesterday I was talking to a paralegal about substitute serving. And I said, hold on, let me go and get you the exact rule. And mm -hmm. I went on the ServeNow website to give them the rule. Cool. Very nice. Um, Barbara says, um, more of a comment, she says, she always asks the attorney who sends the documents if there are any special rules they need to follow, i.e. no service on Sunday, et cetera. That's great. We know a lot, most of the special rules and where we can serve California, for example, you need to make on California papers, you need to make three attempts before you can subserve. Mm -hmm. In Maryland, you can subserve on the first attempt. Mm -hmm. So we are pretty familiar, but it's always a good idea to ask what the rules are in that particular state. Mm -hmm. And we've actually served papers for people in other countries um, and what I ask them to do, I will provide them with this service information and ask them to please prepare the affidavit because mm -hmm. European courts, Canadian courts, they all have different formats that they like that we're not familiar with. Right, right. Um, what is a, uh, if, if our audience wants to ask you uh, any questions or contact you, what would be the best way for them to do that? Okay, they can call my office. Uh, my phone number is 301-869-5081. You could always email me, and my email address is tori at torylegalservices.com. And that's Tory Singular, right? T O R R I yes. legalservices.com. Correct. Awesome. Great. Um, I think we got to everything uh, related to affidavits today. If you have any more questions for Tori, feel free to uh, give her a call or shoot her an email. Uh, Tori, thank you so much for being here today. Great information. My pleasure. Um, My this pleasure. webinar. Oh, go ahead, Tori. No, it's my pleasure to be here and to educate process servers so that we can, we are professionals. And when we get some of these affidavits and when I hear some stories, I want to elevate our business. People right. think of us as we are the low lowlifes because we serve papers. And that is not true. We are all professionals and need to act professionally. And our work product should be professional. Yeah, I mean, uh, I definitely can uh, attest that uh, Tori is all about elevating the industry as a whole. And uh, I hope we all hope we all appreciate that, you know, sharing this information and caring about the profession. Um, you know, it's easy to be very uh, kind of self-serving, but that certainly is not Tori and the folks that dedicate themselves to the profession and the associations and, you know, uh, donate their time to um, this and their fellow colleagues. It's, uh, it's much appreciated. So make sure you say thank you when you get a chance. But um, <laughs> So uh, just to kind of wrap things up here again, this will, um, uh, this video will be online, hopefully uh, hopefully by tomorrow, if not, definitely uh, middle of next week or so after the holiday weekend. We don't have anything planned yet for the July ServeNow EDU. If anyone out there has any ideas, feel free to contact us here at ServeNow. We will let you know if we do schedule something. Um, in the meantime, I hope everyone enjoyed today's 
webinar and have a great 4th of July weekend. And thank you all for being here. And Tori, once again, thank you so much. My pleasure. All right. We'll talk to everyone Bye -bye. soon. Thank you.